What's going on everybody? This is Steven Robles here and this is our new home. It's a new construction here in Central Florida, and we're right at the stage where we're running cables. I'm running Ethernet cables for internet wherever I want it, hardwired. I'm running speaker cables for a couple of rooms for home theater. So I want to show you around, explain what we're doing and some of the tools I'm using to hopefully do this properly. And I've consulted with some people, watched a lot of videos. Linus Tech Tips and Snazzy Labs have great videos on doing this kind of stuff in a home as well. I'm going to show you around, show you what I've done. I do have an office that'll be set up for podcasting. And plus I wanted to make sure I had ethernet run to any TV that I'm gonna be streaming to. I'm gonna have Apple TV boxes and multiple TVs. And so I ran ethernet there and it's all going into one central location where I'm gonna use a ubiquity brain and switch in addition to ubiquity access points or wireless routers around the house. And I'll explain that in a moment as well. So we're in the garage right now. This is where we'll be parking the cars. and. I'll take you through the house and kind of show you some of the stuff we've been doing around. So the most important thing is internet source. Where's the internet coming from? And there was a little bit of a scare. If you follow some of the podcast I'm on, I talked about, there was actually an unknown if we're gonna have actually hardwired internet at this location. It's pretty rural here in central Florida, but I did get confirmation that Spectrum, which is a cable internet, it's not fiber, unfortunately, there's no fiber available but we will have Spectrum cable internet here. And from what I can tell, it's gonna be coming in from the road off the wire and will be coming somewhere in this area. This is still in the garage. And hopefully Spectrum can bring in the cable here. And what they told me on the phone is that they'll run the coax cable. So wherever the modem lives, where the internet hub will be, that they'll put that inside the house in the interior in whatever room we want. So I'm hoping that the internet guy will run a coax cable through the attic into that place. I put up the drywall pretty soon. And so the window for getting any wiring installed at least easily is closing. So I wanna make sure we do all that before drywall happens. So this is actually the closet kind of in the middle of the home where we're gonna be running all the ethernet cables too. And so these are all the ethernet cables I've run so far. This is just CAT6. I didn't do CAT6E or seven or anything like that. Again, because we're only gonna have cable internet over coax, there's probably not much reason to run like 10 gigabit cable. I could have done it for future proofing, but for cost wise and for speed, I just did the CAT6. And so every CAT6 cable is actually running into this room. And you see, I have it up pretty high. So the ubiquity brains and all that equipment is gonna live in this closet. And I'm gonna rack mount it up high. This closet's also gonna be used for like a toy closet for my kids. And so I don't wanna take up anything low. I'm gonna put all the internet stuff up high. All these ethernet cables will be going into that ubiquity switch and this should be the hub of operations. If I ever do a network attached server, like a Synology, I'll probably do that eventually. I'll probably have it live in this closet as well. Now, whenever we're running ethernet cable into a wall, I've been stapling it to the studs on the interior of the wall. And there's actually these special staples that you can get. I'll put a link to the Amazon product where I got these, but these are special staples that are meant to be used for ethernet cable. So they don't go all the way down and pinch the cable. There actually is a space here where the ethernet cable can still actually move back and forth through it, but it will hold the cable firm. I'll show you a couple places where we have that stapled. But this is what I use to staple the cables wherever needed to be. And then you also have to put this kind of foam up wherever there's a hole in the wood. So just for fire code and all that. So there's some expandable foam spray wherever we have cable coming in through the top of the wall. So there's several places where we have TV setups ready for the TV to mount on the wall. And so that's what we have here. This is actually the master bedroom TV we're gonna be putting on the wall here. Wherever we wanted a TV, we had the electrician put an electrical box here. I put a two gang outlet. So that'll go right here. I'll actually have an Apple TV mounted behind the TV. So I didn't need to run HDMI cable from somewhere else to the TV in this situation. I'll show you a different setup I have in a different room. But here I have the electrical for the TV set up by the electrician. And then I also have ethernet, again, running directly to that Apple TV. The Apple TV could run off of Wi-Fi, but we're gonna have a lot of devices in the house, gonna have a lot of smart devices that are gonna be dependent on the Wi-Fi. And so I want as many devices as possible to be hardwired to the network, not pulling on the Wi-Fi routers, but then you also get just a faster and more reliable connection. And wherever we have low voltage wire coming through the wall, 
that'll be speaker wire or ethernet cable. I actually have these little metal rings. I just got these at Lowe's, you can get them at Home Depot. And just screw these to the stud and pull the cable through. So when the drywall is being installed, the drywall people know to route around this or to cut around this. So there'll be a hole in the drywall and then I'll put a plate on the front. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna be doing like ethernet jacks in the wall or if I just wanna have, just kinda have that brush, teeth brush looking uh, plate here where the cable just comes through. Of course, I'm gonna be doing a series of videos on it. So subscribe to the channel, like this video, but I'll also explain exactly what I do when I finish the process once that time comes. Now here we got a couple things going on. This is actually the main living room area and I wanted to do a TV on the wall again. So you see, this is actually an HDMI cable that's gonna be coming through the wall. I have it coming out here. This will attach the TV. The bottom side of the HDMI cable will go to a home theater receiver. Got a Denon receiver for that. Have power right here for the TV as well. So we can just mount the TV to the wall, no cables seen anywhere. But then here at the bottom, I have ethernet coming out, which I might actually do just a little cheap switch there so I can have ethernet running to the Apple TV, to whatever game systems, and to the home theater receiver. So that's all in the wired network. And also at the bottom of the HDMI cable coming out. But I still have to run the speakers. So I'm gonna be doing some in-ceiling speakers and actually in-wall speakers. I'm gonna have a left, right, and center channel speaker here by the TV in the wall. I'm gonna run those speakers to a plate that I've yet to put down here plus four ceiling speakers. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It'll be like a 7.1, or more specifically, two of those speakers will be Dolby Atmos. So it's really a 5.1.2 home theater system. So again, left, right, center here, two speakers directly over the couch for Dolby Atmos, and then two rear surrounds. All those cables will run through a plate down here, and I'll have a nice wall plate, banana plugs, and all that kind of stuff for the speakers. So this will be kind of the main home theater area right here in the living room. So when it comes to in-ceiling speakers, I did a lot of research on this about Dolby Atmos 5.1, 7.1 and all that. And again, I'm doing a 5.1.2. That means there's gonna be four in-ceiling speakers, two surround, which will go in the back of the living room, angle towards the sofa, and two speakers directly over the sofa for the Dolby Atmos specifically. That's what Atmos speakers are. They're the ones right above where you sit. Or if you have virtual surround, it actually bounces it off the ceiling and down. That's technically what Dolby Atmos is. And they do sell these pre-construction brackets where you can actually screw this to the studs in the ceiling and it will go across the studs like this. And when you do this before the drywall goes up, the drywall people can actually cut the circle already for you so you don't have to do that later. You don't have to be cutting your own ceiling. If you mount these brackets exactly where you want the in-ceiling speakers, then they should be able to do that. You have the speaker wire that you run already come through the bracket. And all you have to do is come in, put the speaker up there, screw it in, connect the speaker wire, and you're good to go. Not that order. You definitely want to connect the speaker wire before you screw it in, but you know what I mean. I will say with these pre-construction brackets, it has been very difficult to find a bracket that fits a speaker exactly. This is actually the Monoprice bracket, and there's a few different brands you can get on Amazon and elsewhere. Some of them are very expensive. And I wasn't about to pay like $50 for two of these because I needed four in here. So I got this on Amazon. It's the mono price for the six and a half inch in ceiling speakers. But the ironic thing is they don't fit the mono price speakers. I tried the eight inch first, the bracket, and I got the mono price eight inch in ceiling speaker and it did not work. So I tried the six and a half inch and for some reason the mono price ones just do not fit. So Polk Audio makes some in ceiling speakers I actually got a couple from my local Best Buy. I'll put a link to the speakers I got in the video description as well. But those 6.5 inch Polk Audio in-ceiling speakers fit perfectly in the Monoprice 6.5 inch in-ceiling pre-construction bracket. So I'm gonna have four of these brackets, four of those Polk Audio six and a half inch speakers, and I'm gonna put these brackets in, screw to the studs, drywall guys come in, cut the hole, and then I'll be able to just put the speakers in and connect the cable. So, if you can, if you're in a position to be able to do a pre-construction bracket, again, I can recommend this and they go with the Polk Audio speakers, but you probably wanna buy them in advance, buy the speaker you're planning on using and the bracket and make sure they fit together. I went through several of these and again, several did not fit. So just a word of warning, but I can tell you these Monoprice six and a half inch pre-construction brackets do fit Polk Audio six and a half inch in ceiling speakers. Now this is the back corner of the living room and you'll see a white cable coming down right there. 
That's actually gonna be one of the wireless access points or wireless routers, a Ubiquiti one, that I'll be using. I'm actually gonna use two here. I used Ubiquiti's home design guide. It's totally free to use. I'll put the link in the video description. But you can actually upload your floor plan, tell it what walls or what material, exterior walls, block, interior wood, and it will tell you what your coverage will look like across the house where you place your access points. So I'm gonna place one here. It's gonna be power over ethernet. So I didn't need electrical power there in the ceiling. It'll just get it from the ethernet cable over power over ethernet. Then actually my office is the opposite side of this wall, which I'll show you in a moment. But I also want a good Wi-Fi right in the office because I'll be there most of the time. And again, every smart device like light switch and stuff like that should have great Wi-Fi coverage or thread and Bluetooth coverage. I'm gonna be putting some home pods in this room as well to act as those thread border routers. So we should be in a good situation here for smart home devices like light switches and some smart speakers, home pods and home pod minis. So this is where the magic's gonna happen. This is my office. I'm gonna be setting it up for podcasting and doing some videos in here. It's not a huge space, but I think it's enough to put a pretty good sized desk over here, have a camera behind the desk. I'll be able to, on the wall behind the camera, put some decor. And it has high ceilings, which is really gonna help with lighting. So I have actually outlets installed up high, about eight feet off the ground, two feet from the ceiling. And that's where I'll be putting a key light, hair light. And I didn't wanna to have to run power from the lights up there all the way down to the outlets by the floor. So that's why I put them up there. And of course here I have power and ethernet going down right behind the desk. I ran two ethernet cables to the office, one for redundancy, but two, I'm gonna have a good amount of devices connected to the internet here in the office. I could use one of those, again, cheap little switches to kind of split it off but I wanted two dedicated lines right here to the office. Gonna be doing some sound treatment here in the office, so recording for podcasts should sound really good. And we're gonna do special sound dampening insulation in the walls. I have three kids, the main living room is right off of this office. And so hopefully that sound dampening insulation plus the sound treatment in the room, I'll be able to record in here at any time of day and not have to worry about too much of the noise outside. There's also a big window right here, which would be nice for like a fill light effect but I'm probably gonna do a Hunter Douglas smart shade where I can raise and lower that as needed, whether I'm doing video or podcast or just black it out. They actually make blackout curtains. That's what I'm probably gonna have there on that window. So this is the last room I'll show you. This is the living room. There's actually gonna be a fireplace down here. Fireplace doesn't take up this entire space. It's gonna be probably about half of that, but we're gonna mount the TV above it. Typically, I'm not crazy about TVs above fireplaces. They typically get very high and kind of an awkward height to view. But this again, is gonna start pretty low and it's gonna be a pretty good sized TV. So it should be okay as far as viewing height. And again, I ran ethernet here and power. And so the Apple TV that'll be behind the TV has ethernet, I have power. And I was considering doing in-ceiling speakers here in the living room, but it actually has very high ceilings about, I think it's 11 feet. And the amount of in-ceiling speakers and to get powerful enough sound from in-ceiling speakers, it was probably gonna be pretty expensive. And I'm just not confident about in-ceiling speakers here in this room. So I'm actually gonna do a sound bar, but I'm gonna do the Sonos Arc, which is a pretty good sound bar. It has Dolby Atmos. You can pair it with the Sonos subwoofer. And they actually make a special mount. I'll put a link down in the video description that actually has a TV mount with sound bar mount all together. And that's what I plan to do over the fireplace. So. If you enjoyed this look, I'm gonna be doing a series of these videos talking about the smart home stuff installing. Again, the drywall's going up next and then doing some in-ceiling speakers, home theater, the smart light switches, doorbells, all that kind of stuff is gonna be decked out with all that home kit gear. So subscribe to the channel. You don't wanna miss any of those videos. Click the bell icon so you'll be updated of all that. And the channel has lots of videos, tutorials on podcasting, building a website, all that kind of stuff. And if you have any questions about the smart home that I'm building, or any other questions, you can leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this, and thanks again for watching. I'll catch you next time.